Hi, everyone. I'm Igor. I'm with Consensus. Uh, if you have interacted with me uh, through Consensus, it's most likely been through the Consensus Enterprise side of the house. I, I spend most of my time there uh, working with clients, kind of helping them define blockchain strategy, going through implementations, etc. So if you are an enterprise and you are looking uh, to explore blockchain technology, feel free to reach out to us, uh, Andrew Keys and, and team. Uh, we love being a resource and we would love to help you explore your use case with you. Um, when I'm not doing the enterprise stuff, I like to spend my time thinking about identity, uh, KYC, and what these things can look like on the blockchain. Um, and I like to frame the discussion, I guess, uh, by this question, uh, what is the size of the address space uh, that we're dealing with when we use uh, you know, Ethereum? So if you read the yellow paper, an address is a 160-bit code used for identifying accounts. Um, 2 to the 160 is roughly 1.46 times 10 to the 48, uh, which looks like <laughs> this, um, which is one quindecillion, um, so like 1.5 quindecillion um, possible addresses. Um, this is mainly, mainly to illustrate that math is cool. Um, but you know we have we have a, a large address space to work from. So, with that kind of framing, how how can you demonstrate you are who you say you are on these systems? Um, and it turns out identity is a really difficult problem. Uh, the United Nations has a an initiative ID twenty twenty. Uh, the goal of that initiative is to provide every single human being on the planet with access to a digital identity by the year, as a, as a fundamental human right, by the year 2020. Um, so identity is a problem that's you know, at the scale of, of humanity. Now, if you live in uh, you know, an economy that's developed and has a you know, developed financial services industry, um, you, know, you can have things like credit scores. If you live in the United States, you're subject to a FICO score. Um, a FICO, FICO is actually a software company uh, who aggregates all this data about you and then resells that data um, as an aggregate score. And you don't really have much say about that. Um, so not really uh, an open or decentralized system. And if you live in an emerging, an emerging market where you might not have a robust financial infrastructure, um, you don't have access to these kinds of services. Um, so you can't get you know, access to financial services because you can't establish a creditworthiness. And then, of course, you know, users may experience denial of identity by identity providers. You can, you can get your Facebook account closed. Um, and there's nothing you could really do about it, which is a little crazy in our ultra-connected uh, mobile world. Um, so our goal is to provide stickiness for your public address. And really what I, what I mean by that is, is trying to convey this idea of uh, probabilistic confirmation of a human being being behind a public address. And we, like to, we try to address this in a lightweight uh, user experience uh, where the user has control. I do want to say there are many ways to skin a cat. Um, given that we have such a large address space and this is an open platform, I think there are going to be many different approaches to solving uh, KYC, identity, et cetera. You know, uh, what I'm going to talk about is not the only way and it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. You know, U-port attestations are, are a different kind of attestation than, than what we're talking about here. Um, but I do, I do think that registries are a fundamental building block um, of this kind of global operating system that we're building on the world computer. So this is my registries, registries, registries slide. <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be a, a pattern that we see emerging over and over and over again. Oracles um, providing attestations and the underlying mechanism is a registry of addresses that people can reference. I think that's just, you know, like a Unix command. Um, so, Given that you know, this market is immature and nascent, um, you know, we took the approach of just building something and putting it out there and getting some feedback and iterating on that feedback. Um, you know, the, the viability of, a, of an attestation platform, I think, is probably still early to, too early to tell. Um, so what did we build? 
some of you might have used it, uh, heard of this. I know some of you here have used this. If you have used proof of physical address, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think it's super cool that you're engaging um, you know, with this platform. And really what it is, it's, a, it's actually a simple kind of state machine, and it's simple by design. Um, when you navigate to proofofphysicaladdress.com, you uh, see a simple web form. You've seen this kind of web form a million times every time you order something to be delivered to your house. It's just your address. Um, you input your address, you hit submit. Uh, the app will generate a deposit address. Uh, you pay some ether. And when you pay some ether to that deposit address, we actually physically send you a letter in the mail. Um, that letter contains a unique identifier. When you get that letter in the mail, you come back to the website, you uh, input the unique identifier, and you input an Ethereum address, um, anyone that you want. Uh, it could be the one you use to fund the deposit address, but it doesn't have to be. Um, when you submit that, we will update our on-chain registry and provide an attestation that we, um, consensus or proof of physical address, uh, sent you a letter, and we are attesting that you were able to receive that letter in the mail. So, I don't want to say that uh, proof of physical address is the solution to blockchain KYC. And our founder, Joe, actually, he calls this um, proof of the ability to intercept mail <laughs> at a physical address. Um, but I shortened that title down. Um, but you can imagine um, kind of an ecosystem of these kinds of attestation providers emerging over time. Uh, different, small, lightweight primitives um, that the users can go out and reach out to and get attestations for their accounts. Um, so I mentioned we have been in production um, a few months now, and it's, it's pretty fun to see where we're getting responses from and interest. We've had over 300 submissions worldwide, uh, purely organic traffic. We have submissions from 24 countries, including Liberland, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. Um, and, you know, we do have a roadmap, we're, we're working on this. Um, we do want to provide more proof of services, and we are working with the DAP ecosystem. Uh, you know, we're working with Uport for badge integrations, Etherloan, Safe Market, uh, had lunch with Griffin, we might do a Balance 3 integration as well. Um, we're working on infrastructure improvements on our side, and also, um, one of the things I'm excited about, uh, we're working on an MVP of our platform API, I don't want to promise any dates or anything. Uh, it's still very early, but that's something we're working on behind the scenes. Um, but an idea I want to illustrate is that to build proof of physical address, so on the bottom, it's all the components we've used. Um, it takes a village to raise a child. We are able to plug into the Ethereum community and all the different components that exist, and we're able to build a service um, as small as it is, as primitive as it is, but app, dApps, apps, and services that are being built on Ethereum can uh, kind of reach out and use that service. Um, so I think it's super exciting that over time, as we keep building these things out, um, you know, the ecosystem just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, so yeah, that's proof of physical address. Um, you can go check it out, use it, and stay tuned. We'll be coming out with more. Thank you, Igor. Igor Lilich.